Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl back with another one and we are only a couple days into 2021 and already the rumor mill is kind of going through the roof. It just dropped, I think the other day that we are reported to get folding iPhones. So in this video, we're not only gonna talk about that and we'll kind of wrap up all of the Apple rumors that we've been getting in the past month. Curious to hear your guys' thoughts, but I have the article here. And according to this, Apple already has a couple patents that they're kind of putting through for folding devices. So they're currently testing out two with one reportedly coming out sometime in 2024, 2023, around that time. So the first one is going to look like a dual screen design that kind of comes together to be one large screen. So if we think of the Galaxy Z Fold, that's probably the best example of phones that are currently out. And the second one is something similar to the Galaxy Z Flip, which will actually open vertically and be something like a classic flip phone. So I'm thinking just by reading these rumors, we'll probably see something similar to the Galaxy Z Fold as opposed to the Flip. Just having something larger is something I think Apple would kind of get around. The toughest part for any folding device is of course that hinge mechanism. And we saw from the Z Fold, the OG one, that had so many issues. They actually delayed production for a couple months. And even when it did come out, there was actually a lot of bubbling dirt in the hinges. And if we recall, they actually recalled so many of the review units literally a day after all their reviews went live. So I know Samsung got a ton of flag on that. They were kind of coming off of the heels of their Note devices exploding so maybe not the best PR. But if we actually look at the Z Fold 2, they made some huge, huge improvements. I think they completely redesigned the hinge mechanism. And if we actually look at say MKBHD, that phone won the most improved of the year. I guess it's not too hard to improve on a device that doesn't really work to something that actually does. And even though that's still a couple years down the line, I can almost guarantee when Apple releases it, they're gonna say this is revolutionary, it's mind blowing, it's the best implementation. And usually that's right, they tend to do things really well, but they're no means first to the market. And we see that all the time with Android. So for example, wireless charging, when that came out on the iPhones, I think two years ago now, it was revolutionary, even though Android or most other phones have had them close to a decade. No, the Nexus 4 had it in like 2009. 2009, so clearly that technology is being around. That's the same thing with folding phones. The tech is already there. Apple's gonna wait a couple years to kind of perfect it. And when they do come out, people will say, or Apple fanboys will kind of rejoice and say, oh my God, this is the greatest thing ever. Literally everyone else in the tech community will say, this has been out now forever. And now they just introduced MagSafe, which is their own form of wireless charging. So they're kind of reinventing the wheel. They have similar tech but it's just better. And I do like MagSafe better actually than normal wireless charging. So I've got this plugged in and what most people fail to realize, you know, when you do charge a device, we've got this now charging, most people still use their phone when it's charging. You can't do that with a traditional wireless charger. So I actually think MagSafe is an ingenious design. And I honestly wouldn't be surprised in the future if we no longer saw a lightning port, USB-C, they'll probably come late to the game with that as well. But that's once again, just another rumor that's brewing, expect to see a portless iPhone in the near future. Moving on to the next rumor, this was a weird one. So there was a Twitter poll that kind of went viral. Do you get rid of your iPhone boxes? And it really is a weird take on it. I'm not too sure what people were saying. Same kind of thing with Apple fanboys. They love to collect things. And if you are a collector, it could possibly be nice memorabilia. Apple tends to make some of the nicest boxes. I personally keep a ton of mine, which as a reviewer, you would expect that I would. And after quickly scrounging through this studio, you can kind of see which side of the fence that I sit on. Clearly, I collect these. There is no real reason for them, so other than iPhones. The ones I've got here, so this was the 12 series. We've got the SE, the 12 Pro Max, the 12, the 12 Mini, iPad boxes, AirPod boxes, Apple pencils galore. Is there some use for these other than having them for nostalgia? I'm not really a collector. There have been some pretty interesting ones online. People store thumbtacks. I don't know. Curious to hear what you guys have to think. If you have any creative solutions for any of these boxes, let me know. But for some reason that was trending in the world of the internet the other day. We live in a weird place. That, we're good. <laughs> However you wanna look at it. 
I mean, this one person has a joystick set up with actual working buttons and a retro gaming setup. Speaking of dimes, so another great reason to hold on to your boxes, if you ever sell any of your stuff, it tends to increase its resale value. So people usually love to see if you have the original product in the original box, if you've got all the cables, if you've got the Apple stickers. Even used? I would pay more money if someone had, say a phone, with a box. It oh, seems more like legitimate, you know, right, that right. they didn't steal it off of someone. Right. It's bought from a store. Maybe you should hang on to your Apple boxes. Okay, next off. This is the one that I want to create a video on at the end of the year, but obviously we got into Christmas, New Year's, we can finally talk about it, the Apple car. So we saw a ton of stuff at the end of December. Apple is reportedly building their own car and it should be coming out around 2024. So according to Ming-Chi Koo, which is a pretty famous analyst, he predicted all of the iPhone 12 rumors. I talked about him last year. He says that the car won't launch between 2025 and 2027. So still five, six, seven years from now. If we did see it though, it will be really integrated into the iOS or I guess Apple ecosystem. So you can expect your iPhone to automatically say, start your car when you walk near it, if you've got it in your pocket. Do you think they'd come up with their own charger or do they like piggyback off of Tesla? Cause I know Tesla's made their supercharger open to everybody, but all the other manufacturers more or less went on their own route. I can guarantee you it will be a mega lightning charger. From all those iPhone boxes, if you save all your cables, you can juice up your car with a thousand iPhone cables. Who knows? Like I can guarantee it'll probably be OEM. Like I can't see Apple making an open source charger. It's just the most un-Apple thing to do. They have lightning. I guess they're hopping on the USB-C train, but I don't know. We go MagSafe, we go cordless, so it doesn't even matter. And what, is that just gonna MagSafe to like the roof? Like let me just magnetically slap this thing onto my car. You know what? I wouldn't hold it past them to have like solar panels on the roof too to help generate some Okay, sort of okay. So Nick argues that there will be, you know, solar panels. I would say knowing Apple, knowing their design philosophy, it will look very, very clean, almost to the point where minimalism takes over. It, you know, it's almost like form over function. Like the Magic Mouse? Like the Magic Mouse. You will probably see a charging port at the bottom of the car just so it's hidden. And according to this, Apple originally had a team of 200 employees working on the car, but they're aiming to have over a thousand. It's also supposed to be in this top secret area somewhere on Apple campus. So we will kind of see what happens in the next couple of years. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if we saw an Apple car. It wouldn't be the biggest shock. Apple is no longer just selling iPhones. They're getting big into services. So Fitness Plus, Apple TV Plus, they're even into banking. So making that leap into the automotive space, honestly, wouldn't be surprised. Would you drive an Apple car? A lot of people, I would see, would I? So a lot of people say I am the biggest Apple fanboy. I'm the biggest like techie. I cannot get on the Tesla train. For whatever reason, I am stuck to Petrol engines, if I'm a petrol head, whatever, I love manual cars. So I will always try to have a six speed gear shifter. I will always try to have a naturally aspirated engine. I know they're a dying breed. I know that automatics dual clutches are way quicker. I know that a Tesla $35,000 Model 3 can smoke my car. I cannot make that switch. I just love the feedback of rowing through gears. I don't know, unless Apple gives me a car, obviously. I would drive it. Not sponsored. Not sponsored. Okay, on to the last topic and then we're kind of done for this rumor video. So this one is probably the most likely it is the new M1 chips that are coming to both the iMac and the Mac Pro. We did see at the end of 2020, Apple released the trifecta. So they had the MacBook Air, the 13 inch MacBook Pro and the Mac mini. All of those featured the M1 chip and I won't even lie, the performance on these is so, so good. As an example, the 13 inch MacBook Pro, I think that's around 2000 bucks, is quicker at scrubbing through timelines and editing 4K video than my $5,000 16 inch MacBook Pro with of course an Intel chipset. There are a few bugs. There are things that I'm not a fan of that kind of has to do with the new Mac OS Big Sur. But for example, the Mac mini that was featured in my desk setup tour, I can crunch through everything that this channel produces in 
a $800 or $900 computer. So it is a ton of value and having that power come to the iMac, which has a 5K display or even the Mac Pro. I feel sorry for everyone that dropped 20, $25,000 on a fully spec Mac Pro last year. That will now be obsolete with their new M1 chip. Does that suck? It only makes sense. Apple is now making stuff in their own ecosystem. The efficiency, you know, the battery life on these, for example, 20 hours, that's nuts. That is best in class across any laptop. Nothing comes remotely close to this. And just kind of reading through this article, so 2021 launch, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw that in March. I know that they refreshed some of their devices around the summer, WWDC is a big upgrade time. And if we do expect those, they're actually testing 16 or 30 two core GPUs. So that's super impressive. Let me know if you guys are waiting for that. If you're eyeing the new iMac, honestly, wait. That's why these rumors are sometimes good, just so you know when new stuff is coming out. But across any of these topics, whether it was the new Apple car, whether it's the new folding phone, or if you're just looking to save some of your Apple iPhone boxes, Hit me up in the comments. Happy to chat tech with you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed this bit of a different video, but really wanted to get this out as the rumor mill has already started. It's only a couple days into 2021 and we're already talking about Apple cars. Hope to catch the rest of you in one of my next vids. Peace.